a look into the U.S.'s oldest and largest national meal delivery service for senior citizens on today's Common Good, presented by Subaru and the Subaru Share the Love event, going on now through January 3rd. Hey y'all, and welcome to Common Good. I'm Luria Freeman. We're here today with the Staten Island chapter of Meals on Wheels, where we've talked to the staff, volunteers, and even a senior recipient to learn about the intricacies of Meals on Wheels. Since 1976, Meals on Wheels has provided free, nutritious meals to the United States' aging population. With the help of a large volunteer network and dedicated staff, Meals on Wheels has a presence in nearly every community in America to address senior hunger and isolation. You have to realize that uh, in, in our scenario, the average age is over 80, close to 84, and these are individuals who have some level of disability or frailty. That face-to-face -face daily contact is a person who they know cares about them, sees them every day. It's subtle, but they know it, it adds a sense of security and well-being. Somebody knows who I am. Our standard of service is to provide two meals a day. It's a hot meal and it's a chilled meal, cold meal. We're serving 1,200 people a day on an average. A bit over a third of our census also requires weekend meals. These are individuals who don't have weekend support. So on Saturday mornings, we have volunteers and staff delivering meals for the weekend. Being able to help people that need help, that aren't able to get out themselves or feed themselves, it's a good feeling. And we, we make little friendships too along the way. Like people look forward, I think, to seeing us just being able to give back. We're fortunate enough to be able to do that. There is a lot of planning. There's a lot of coordination that comes into play every day. We have our chef and our kitchen staff starting to come in at four in the morning. Our target is to have all of the hot meals done, ready to be plated by nine o'clock. During the intermediate time between six and nine, uh, our staff are packaging our cold meal and along with all the accompaniments that go with both meals, the milk, bread, fruit, dessert, salads, all that has to be refrigerated. So that when our drivers, our staff drivers come in at eight o'clock, they get their trucks ready. Volunteers meet the truck, insulated bags, get their food. Finding the people when you deliver the meals, a lot of them are glad you came, you know, you have a little conversation with them. It isn't just handing a meal and running away. A couple of words here and there. There are times I've changed light bulbs for people, with, you, know, you know, little, little things like that. You know, it's nice. We have an aging population. Um, th that large baby boomer generation is only going to reach our average age in 2030. So we have a, a large group of people uh, who will, are in their 60s and 70s and a large group of people over uh, 80, 85. We have many people we're serving here in their 90s. It's not unusual, more likely now than maybe 50 years ago, where adult children are living in other parts of the country. They're not, they're not here anymore. During COVID, a lot of calls came, a lot of referrals came in of people who were not able to now go out shopping independently, needed Meals on Wheels. So we, there's those impacts on our aging population that requires them to need uh, delivery of healthy nutrition. When the person comes to deliver, they they spend like two, three minutes and we talk a little bit and that, that helps a lot, you know. They just don't drop the food and run. They always, you know, very courteously and uh, like if I have something to, to show them to look at, they'll look at it for me and they're very helpful. I love it. it here in this organization, working with this, this staff that we have, I, I spend time every morning in the kitchen. I always talk about my argument with volunteers. I'll say to a volunteer, we thank you so much for what you do. And invariably, 90% of the time, the volunteer will say, no, no, I thank you more for letting me do this. And then I say, no, I thank you more. And that's a nice kind of argument to have. Our See Good Do Good challenge this week is to support your local Meals on Wheels Center. This support could look like donating money or volunteering your time to help the amazing organizations that provide meals to those in need. After all, whether big or small, one act of common good can change the world. That's it for today. I'd like to thank Subaru for presenting today's episode. Through its partnership with Meals on Wheels during the Subaru Share the Love event, Subaru has helped to deliver nearly 4 million meals and friendly visits to America's seniors. To learn more, visit Subaru.com share. Thanks so much for watching Common Good.